Why haven't I filmed any solar projects? Maybe I thought the tech wasn't ready or the payback was awful. Is it now worthwhile? Here's my five step strategy for figuring the best solution for your home, whether to use a battery with solar power, why we want strategy to transition from gas to electric and aim for a near zero bill. Keep using your gas boiler, it's probably still under warranty. Include for future proofing to easily receive a heat pump and EV later. Let's figure out how long it pays for itself. It's way better to have an idea about the best options before you go to an installer. It's a lot of money and you need to know your options ahead of time to optimise the sale process. Rule number one of our homemade solar strategy, think about our usage. How to know what you use exactly? Well, here's a rough guide for you to do it and just break it down by appliance, but better still, your utility provider will email you something like this once a year with your tariff rates, overall cost and usage in hourly units for the whole year. And for my strategy, I'm trying to maximize the electricity use and reduce the gas use. So here's the same home with optimal usage for our solar. And why do I want to increase my electricity use? Well, even if you're not putting any solar in yet, you should be thinking about electrification and renewables in the future and the increasing cost of gas. The greater your electricity use, the higher your potential savings through solar power and special tariffs and credits that being able to store power gives through grid optimization, even if you don't have solar. And why reduce your gas usage? Well, within the next 10 years, whilst electricity costs are unlikely to get parity with gas unit costs, cheaper renewables combined with rising carbon costs for gas and the geopolitical stuff around gas supply will mean the relative cost gap is going to narrow significantly. And you can't create gas using your home the way you can create electricity. It needs to be imported from somewhere. It's going to get more expensive, whereas renewable electricity is infinite and with the right kit, you can make it in your home for free. So how do we start the transition from gas to electricity for our home solar renewable system? Well, if you consider your consumption, the two things I can change now for very little cost are hot water and cooking. You can see my video here about why I changed to induction for cooking rather than a gas hob. And as a keen cook, it was a revelation to me, just as responsive as gas and nothing like those awful electric ceramic ones. Introducing solar is the perfect time to change to induction cooking, and I promise you, you'll never look back. Instead of getting your hot water from your gas boiler, we should instead be considering electricity for our hot water, even without solar, as hot water storage is ideal for a transition to a low tariff off-peak rate and to prepare for the possibility of electric heating in the future. Electric heating is only gonna get cheaper and better over the coming years, although unless you are building a house from scratch, I wouldn't rush into a heat pump yet. If you want to chat to me in detail about a heating and insulation strategy for any of your self-build and improvement questions, you can always contact me here. So pre-switch, the typical annual usage is going to be 2,500 kilowatt hours of electricity and 16,500 of gas. And after reducing our gas and increasing our electric use with the cylinder and the induction hob, it's gone up to 6,600 for electricity and the gas is down at 13,000. And let's quickly talk jargon since sadly there's no escaping it with solar. You'll see watts, kilowatts, kilowatt hours and kilowatt peak. I would not get hung up on it if I say the wrong kilowatt thing. It's easy to understand if you just remember we're including time in the measurements. So in this case for our system, we're thinking about the kilowatts used over an entire year using hours as a unit of measure, just like your annual electricity and heating bills are laid out. So that's our strategy. Let's look at system design now. Stage number two, start with the panels. Always max out on your panels and you want to do that by looking at the available space you have. So survey it and then look at the sun and the geography as your starting point. And I've made a video about how you can do that and whether I bother with the online tools out there and you want to do this before you start searching for an installer. So if you already understand your particular needs, the way an installer reacts is a really good barometer for your future relationship. Relationships are everything in home build and improvement and you want an installer with that can-do attitude when you mention what your needs are. 
Now I'm choosing this panel as a starting point. Your installer, of course, will have his own preferences and deals. That's the starting point for your discussion. I'll look at the dimensions of each 500 watt panel. Here I can fit 16 panels on the south facing roofs and these 16 panels become our starting point for designing the system. If we total up the capacity, it's around eight kilowatts of power, which is ideal for covering the whole six and a half kilowatt hours of annual electricity we just discussed. What's the optimal size? If we consider a smaller six kilowatt system with 12 panels, it only generates just under six kilowatt hours, meaning you'd need to buy more grid power. A larger 10 kilowatt system with 20 panels would need the other side of this roof, but that's north facing, so not optimal. And the garden shaded by the surrounding trees and fences, so we can't use the garden in this example. The eight kilowatt, 16 panel setup maximizes the roof's potential. Your roof's orientation makes a difference, so let's talk about that. Your roof pitch is best between 30 to 38 degrees, which works well for solar at UK latitude. Conveniently, most UK volume house builders already build at these pitches. A south facing roof is the best of course delivering that seven to eight kilowatt hours a year the biggest savings and if your roof faces east west you'll get just under six kilowatt hours since the panels catch morning and afternoon sun which is instead of the midday peak but east west setups naturally align better with typical household energy demand anyway so that's higher in the mornings and evening so now we have our panels. The third thing is looking at the system and the cost. And I'm choosing a hybrid system, which is best suited for this particular project. 16 high efficiency, 500 watt solar panels. Go to a five kilowatt hybrid inverter that manages the panels and the batteries with capacity to handle up to 10 kilowatts if you do add more panels later. Then there's the safety switches and controllers, which your installer will set out. The energy flows from the inverter to the consumer unit as it's needed and either onto the sockets and appliances within the house or back to the grid through the smart meter. A crucial part of this system is the 13 kilowatt hour battery storage. It's actually about 12 and a half kilowatt hours of usable energy. And without the option of storing your electricity, you'd use solar during the day, but pay for grid electricity as the sun sets. And we want to avoid using evening electricity from the grid since that's peak cost. The battery saves our abundant daytime solar energy for evening use, the time when everyone is at home, so cutting your grid use to nearly zero. You can also benefit from charging up your batteries using the cheap nighttime tariffs when everyone is sleeping and when there is very little solar in those winter months. And then use that stored super cheap power in the peak time when you all wake up. You can also expand the batteries by adding more units, all monitored by the gateway which is connected to your router and your smart meter. Your system gateway, the brains will help you tailor those energy habits to the roof's orientation, prioritizing how and when to increase demand or when to send back to the grid. And it's enough to massively cut your bill. So for an east-west setup, you might need to buy an additional bit of grid power. There's some ethernet cabling, connects it all to the components. Some are now just using Wi-Fi and you can use an app and have a whole load of data and smart control at your fingertips. Great for people like me that like playing about controlling and tracking your energy. A 250 litre electric hot water cylinder, heat pump ready, around about three kilowatt hours, takes care of the hot water needs, leaving the boiler to just service the heating. For our roof uh, mounting system with rails and hooks that secure the panels under the slates or tiles, mesh guards around the panels keep the birds and the debris out. We need to add in the labour and the scaffolding as well as allow for these skilled trades. Where you are in the country will affect these rates of course so you can just download the spreadsheet by clicking on the link below and you can play about with the numbers by changing the hourly or daily rate. Now with our cost for installation considered the fourth bit we can look at whether it's worthwhile by offsetting these costs against our savings and to work out those let's look at pre-switch existing costs 
And pre-solar, you might be on a standard tariff, something around these figures, but with a renewable system, post-switch, we get the option of some much better deals. So you get your electricity in the night time when we're asleep and demand is low for this low rate and then using those before and after tariffs. Here are our pre and post utility bills. So before solar first, and for our electricity, we'll be paying £1,750 a year. And for gas, we'll pay about £931, given a total energy bill of around 2700 per year before solar. Now, after we've installed our system, post-switch costs, our electrical use is actually zero since we're generating an excess over the year and our summer exports will pay for our winter imports. We'll have a standing charge which we can offset with some SEG leaving us with an annual electric bill of about £63 per year. With our gas it's unchanged at £931 a year including the standing charge and that's of course just for our central heating without the hot water and our grand total for the energy bill is around £995 a year and that gives us a saving of £1,685 a year over the existing arrangement without solar. So we're spending £12,379 on our kit and that pays back in around seven or eight years. And for East West we're again spending about the same on our kit and we're saving about £1,450 per year this time, which pays back in maybe eight to nine years. And what about adding an electric vehicle or heat pump down the line? Well, the system is ready for both. I've included the wiring for an EV charger, which has its own circuit and breaker from the consumer unit. And in a few years, an EV might add 3,000 kilowatt hours to your energy use. The eight kilowatt system and battery can cover most of that though you might buy a small amount of grid power, especially with an east-west roof. A heat pump adds about 4,000 kilowatt hours, but eliminates the boiler and the remaining gas use and bill altogether. It does allow you to add another battery, and the inverter is sized to manage these upgrades without clipping, just about, though a bigger one might be worth considering. Adding a heat pump has a load of other hassles, so another strategy again, which I'll discuss in another video, and I think you'll be interested in my conclusions. This walkthrough is just the starting point, a baseline to make the conversation with your installer as productive as possible. And now the final step is at the end because it's got the hands of the bureaucrats all over it. Step number five is getting the approvals, and here come the inevitable acronyms. DNO approval from your local grid operator to connect the system since it includes a battery and generates a decent amount of power. This is usually free or low cost. Uh, it ensures everything's safe and lets you earn money by selling that extra energy to the grid. And most homes with a standard electrical setup are fine, but in rare cases, a grid upgrade might be needed. There are also these other bureaucratic hoops and hurdles to negotiate. Why can't they just use plain English for what is actually a fairly simple thing? There's maintenance and warranties to consider. 10 years sounds good, but in a new industry, research the likelihood of the supplier or your installer going bust and those warranties meaning nothing. And if you want to chat with me about any of your home improvement projects, see the link below. I've got a ground mounted solar system to consider as well as a mounting a solar panels on a flat roof for a micro home project. So visit me again to see those. There are so many options with solar and I've rushed a bit through this one system, but it gives you the overview you need to begin to plan your own project. Let me know if you would do this a different way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.